Hi, this is Ron Nutter, and this is another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time I'm going to show you how to get the Wi-Fi bridge functionality up and running on the GLINet AR750. And that starts now. This is one of the functions that I've I've wanted to get running first. And when you've got one of these, oh that's right, you haven't seen this. In the past few days, I found a case for this, and I'll get this up in the uh, show notes. It's not there right now, and that's and my, and that's my, my apologies for that one. I found a nice little case on Amazon, about 10 bucks, And it gives you a way of, have, has a nice little strap for the AR750, and you can put the power supply right up here, and then you've got good space then on the other side for the USB cable, and for the Ethernet cable that they send with it. So really it's a nice compact little case. Goes right together and you've got two zippers, or not one zipper rather, but two different ways to close it. And this way you can just throw it in your briefcase or carry on. And I've got a similar one that you'll be seeing for some of the other pieces of the Traveler Smart Home. So this, I was trying to find something about this way because I, it took some measuring to figure out how best things were going to fit. Normally I use Pelican cases, but the Pelican case, I couldn't find one just the right size without a lot of space in it. So that's why I went with something like this. And I'm, plus I'm trying to travel as light as I can. And really the Pelican, I mean, it would be nice, but this is very serviceable. So not a problem. And let's go ahead and cut to the screen where you're going to see this. And let's see, we'll just move that up. And you'll go right to the screen and you'll click on the home icon, the globe icon. You will click on repeater. And while it's doing that little swirly right there, that's why it is in the process of discovering the SSIDs. It will, you know, you pick the one you want and you know, I'm going to pause this for just a second here. It will, you know, you enter the passphrase and then it will start the process of association. And it will actually look like, if you look, and let me go ahead and pull it out here. You may not be able to see it easily without power, but the three little lights that you've got up here on the AR750, you'll see it go down to possibly just one, and it will take a few seconds to reestablish. But it will pretty much come up right away. If you do see a problem with it, Seeing five gigahertz SSIDs, uh, I've had one one person say, "Well, it's because they're hidden." Well, I haven't hidden SSIDs in several years, thanks to something that Microsoft went and did, where hiding the SSID, which was a security practice of sorts, although maybe not a good one, that you can make it difficult for people to find. Well, Microsoft did something in Windows eight, Windows seven or eight, that pretty much rendered that mute. So to get things running. Let me drop the graphic here, and we'll start back up into play here. And it will, like I said, it will take it, you know, 20, 30 seconds to establish, maybe a little less, a little bit more. Your first indication that it has gone through the process and has reestablished, you will see the IP address of the SSID followed by WISP right here. Now, when you see that, Okay, you, you've updated, but it's not updating down here in this part of the screen. And that's just a, I think it's a, it's a feature issue with the Chrome browser. Because if you go back, hit the settings button, go back to the globe, and then all your settings are there. Now, something that I have found is if you get into a problem, and let me back the video up here a little bit to get to the point to where it will show you. Okay. When you're entering your password, this is something I ran across and could duplicate. And I thought it was a problem in the code and it wasn't. You should have one dot. Let me bump it forward here a little bit. You should have one dot for each letter in the SSID. If you start seeing multiple dots come up, you may be having what's called a keyboard bounce issue. And there's not an easy way to fix that one. And it may be a false issue, but here's what I went and did is I went and got into, well, okay, it didn't drop the video on me. It, 
uh, I changed over to Firefox, and then that went and took care of the problem. And it's been very uh, reliable to come up in that mode. And it's just, you literally select and go on. Now, if the 5 gigahertz SSIDs don't show up, the way I found to generally fix that, because I had it happen to me several times, is I go through the web interface and I just tell the device to, to reboot. And then that fixes whatever problem. Now, it's probably only showing up for me because, as you can appreciate, it's done. I've been doing a lot of changes in it. I hear once it just kind of gets its brain scrambled and that's the easiest way to fix that. So, so far we've shown the basic setup, how to set up for a VPN and how to do a Wi-Fi bridge. So that's probably the three more common pieces to work with. And we'll start moving on to some of the other options in following videos. This is going uh, in the book that hopefully I'll be releasing it. It looks like now probably the end of June. I've stopped putting any more information in it because I kept adding things. In fact, a, a project that is a perfect fit for this, I just became aware of two days ago, and it could delay publication for several months. There's that much to it, and I see a lot of value to it, but uh, there's a lot of due diligence and things I've got to go through. So you'll see a video on it first, and then probably it'll go to volume two. I can already see this going to volume two, but I don't want to hold this any longer i think you're you're really going to be happy with what you're seeing at least kind of gives you a good blueprint and the traveler smart home uh portion of this series you're going to see continue on because there's other things i'm looking at and the the one project that i got a hold of because of the mozilla foundation i think has got a lot of potential i've got there's some pieces i still don't have to it but i'm already seeing potential in what's going to happen so we'll be moving forward, you know, we're just one step at a time. Uh, I do want to say thank you very much for those that have been subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, even making comments. I had a good conversation with uh, one of you a couple of days ago, and I've since reached out to Sonoff, and I'm waiting for their engineering folks to get back to me to see if there's a way to, to resolve the issue that... Uh, he identified and then I'm, you know, I've, I've seen this, so I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way to do it. It's going to be a hardware mod, I think, and maybe there's a way that Sonoff has of, of dealing with that. But, you know, in any time you, you buy anything through the affiliate links that I've got in all the videos, that is, I get a small portion from that. It's not going to change your price, raise it or lower it. Uh, it does help me and it's, as you can appreciate it, uh, some of this stuff is not cheap, but I'm trying to find things, a way to do things on a budget so that you don't have to spend a whole lot. If you're not buying anything right now, I certainly understand that. I've set up a Patreon page, and here's the link right here. And that is uh, another way you, you can become a patron of this channel for as little as a dollar a month. And I'm doing about two to three videos a week, so... My math's a little off, but it's at eight videos a month. That's, well, about 15 something cents a video. I should have done the math on this before, but there's, I'm going to be continuing this even after I get the first book out to publication because I'm immediately already starting to write stuff for the second volume. And this other one's got there's it's it's very exciting and I, and so i'm trying to get the first part of this done before I move on to the second one uh I, everything i'm doing all the videos i've got step by steps of what i have done and i go through it at least a second or a third time to make sure the steps are staying consistent keeping in the mind that as any firmware changes happen it might change things a little bit but at least it's kind of keeping you at least you got a, a rough idea of what to go through and we're going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi through some of this because there are some, uh, what's the word I want to use, ready to roll distributions where you literally burn the image to the uh, micro SD card, put it in, plug it up, and it just runs. I've hit two distributions like that. And so it's really making it easy because if you've never heard of the Raspberry Pi or RPi for short, it's a single board computer. It's not as powerful, say, as your desktop, but there's a lot of things that it can do 
with the different Linux options that are available for it. But here's the beauty of it. You don't have to really know Linux to start using this. That's, that's what I've seen with the distribution that I'm working with for Plex on the RFI. Yeah, it has some limitations, but it's also not got a large processor. I'm also looking at it as a home control option. And that's the part, especially for those who travel and want to have some of the comforts of home with you. That's a very interesting way of taking some of that with you. But that's all stuff we're working on in the following months. Again, thank you for everybody who has been subscribing to the channel. If you haven't yet, please consider doing so because that will help me a lot as I'm trying to get my first goal is to get to 500 subscribers, then to 1,000. And at 1,000, things get really interesting. But 500 is also going to be a uh, big benchmark as well. There, I'm trying to figure out what I want to say. And in, in, I'm trying to keep the videos to within about 15 minutes that it's uh this is very interesting i this is really start to become more than i had expected so it's if you have any questions please you've already heard me talk about earlier in this video about you know somebody reaching out to me and actually i've had that happen twice and i've one's resulted in a video and another time the the one person who subscribed since subscribed to the channel wants to put the uh, Sonoff 4 Channel Rev, uh, the 4 Channel Pro Rev 2 device out in a garage, but at some distance, and they didn't want to really extend the wireless network out there. And I understand because wireless is, well, I want to work more with the mesh technology, but most of what some of us are going to have at home, I don't really want to extend it very much for a variety of reasons. But there's got to be a way where devices that are wireless only that we can get it to a, another option and one of it may be setting up a very low power Wi-Fi access point because you don't want to become an ISP to the neighborhood and then there's some security related videos we'll be looking at here uh, in the next couple of months because with all these different hacking attempts are going on we've got to start thinking about what we have on our home networks especially when we start putting the the smart tech home tech devices on there or Internet of Things, which is what it essentially is, and looking at that as how best to protect our networks, because if a device goes bonkers for whatever reason, you've got to be able to protect your network because you don't want to lose everything else. So we're going to be talking about some ways on that. We're going, I'll be looking at doing some chalkboard talks. There's, there's a lot coming down the pike, folks, that thank you for everyone who's been with me since the beginning and those that are joining, because I want to help you avoid some of the pitfalls that, that I've run into. So that's about all we're going to talk about this time. I'll have another video out hopefully in the next day or two with some of the more things about this. I'm, I'm getting to a point with the smart home tech piece. I won't with the smart home tech for travelers. It's, it's going to be not as much as it has been lately, but there will be a lot of what I'll be talking about that will be readily applicable to it. So if you have anything you would like to see videos done on, anything you'd like me to look at, please let me know because even though I have about, you know, well over 150 video ideas to do. If there's something where I can help you, that's what I want to do because, you know, I, I, you may expose me to something and get me looking at another that I might not have thought about before. So thank you very much for your time. Again, you, you're going to see this in the book that's going to be coming out, I would say probably toward the end of June. Uh, if I can get out earlier, I can. I'm, I'm actually got it uh, uploading, already uploaded today to the printers. And I'm having some checks down on it. And if I, there's some little kinks that I know I've still got to work out, but I'm trying to get the basic formatting in place. And then we can uh, take it from there. So thank you for your time. And we'll see you again soon.